This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. I don't know how much information you know about me. Um, my name is Mark Rothblatt. Thank you, okay. I only have a couple of slides here. My disclaimer is that, um, you know, I'm not necessarily the badass entrepreneur that you might see uh, come and grace this lecture hall uh, in that, you know, who has five companies under his belt or her belt and has, exits grand, both negative and positive. Um, my situation is I am part of two startups right now, uh, both out of school uh, when I was here at Berkeley, and uh, I've been doing that for the past two and a half years. So I don't have those grand tales necessarily to tell you, but I guess what I think might be um, good for, for this audience is that you know, instead of seeing, if you want to get from A to Z, instead of seeing somebody who's, who's gone through the, the paces a few times, um, I'm someone who is, you know, somewhere in the middle and uh, hasn't, you know, I've gotten far enough along that, you know, I haven't, we haven't flamed out on our startups. Uh, something where Tube Mogul is one of the companies that, that I'm part of that I'll talk about that, you know, we're now at 21 people. Um, we're looking to actually hire uh, a few more engineers, so if you're interested about that uh, for web development, tell me afterwards. Um, and, uh, you know, also, even though I only have the two and a half years of, of experience, I definitely will talk about my lessons learned and experiences and as if I've uh, been through the paces quite a bit. Um, so, like I mentioned, I want to talk about my story, both before, during, and after uh, business school here. This is like one of the, the funny pictures I thought I'd put up. So this is the last time I was skiing. Actually, it was when I was in business school, so the fun goes away a little bit with startups. Um, and then, uh, so I'll talk about my story and then some lessons learned and then, and then go through some, some questions. So as I was putting my notes together, I was thinking, you know, I put something out and I thought, this is, this is brilliant. This is really good stuff. I'm just gonna put this on a slide and it's gonna look great. And uh, uh, well, I'll, show that. I'll show that after I talk about my story. So first, it, it's not as brilliant when you see it on a slide. Um, so pre-MBA, I, I worked for about six years as a, a consultant for a, a healthcare uh, consulting company doing operations and, and uh, IT consultant. Consulting, that's where I met Roshan Bula, who, who actually is one of the organizers of this class. Um, and uh, going to business school, I was thinking, you know, I want something more. I, I want to be part of something from the beginning. I'm interested in entrepreneurship, a little bit more technology focused than what I was doing, but I really thought I'd stay in healthcare. That was kind of what I knew. Um, and then as I went through school, I really got in love with the, the opportunity recognition process and found that it wasn't as important for me to necessarily stay in healthcare. It's more to, to find problems to solve. Um, so, so when I got to school, um, the things I'm gonna highlight here just highlight some of the decisions I had to make and I think are important as you're thinking about starting a company. Um, you know, first semester of business school, uh, for those of you who are in business school, you know, you're, you're, you're part, it's the core classes, it's really rigorous, you don't have time for, for much anything else, and a lot of people decide, well, I'm gonna focus on these core classes and, you know, I'll worry about entrepreneurship stuff next semester or, or second year. But really, um, you know, I decided that, you know, the, some of the things, whether it's, OB class or, or stats, um, microeconomics, I mean, those are things I needed to, to know, but in seven weeks or whatever the, the class schedule is, you know, I needed to, to allocate a lot more of my time to figure out some of this stuff with, and get involved in, in entrepreneurship. And just little things make a difference. So um, I helped organize a mixer that, you know, most of the, it was the second years involved in doing the, the EA, the Entrepreneurship Association, and 
um, did, we did something at the Bears Lair, and there were, it was the, the idea of this here, you know, get, let's get a lot of engineers involved from the different departments, MBAs, mix, talk about ideas. Ended up being mostly business school people, even though I, I did a lot of work trying to reach out, as you guys probably can attest to, happens a lot with, with those types of activities. But um, there was a sign-up list, and I was in charge, so I grabbed that sign-up list, and I emailed a few people that were from the engineering school, and um, you know, one of them I you know, ended up having coffee with, talking about ideas, and a year later was in a class, and actually we are co-founders in, in a business that is now in the incubator. So, I mean, those things pay off. It's all about those interactions. Um, so, so consider those types of sacrifices. And another thing was going to the entrepreneurship forum um, and, and watching as some people got up and did their, their numbers, did the pitch. Um, and uh, was, there, was, the pitch, was there the numbers tonight? I don't know if, that, if you guys do that for this class. Anyways, uh, people would pitch in front of uh, different entrepreneurship activities. Anyways, this guy uh, had this really cool wireless sensor network company. I approached him afterwards, told him about it, that I was really interested, and, and just asked if he needed any help. And you know that turned into a, an internship second semester. And, and that really helped me get my, my feet wet um, in, in startups. Um, you know, other things about second semester, you know, I had an opportunity to work for a hedge fund that was doing healthcare stuff or, or do this startup, and you know, a lot of people die for those hedge fund jobs. And, um, you know, I ended up choosing the this, this startup work, and in the end, it was, it was the right thing to do, but those things were, were hard decisions. And again, it comes down to, if you're, if you're really thinking about doing startup work, just, just do stuff, like get involved. Um, and, and things will pay off and make things happen. Um, same thing happened again with the summer internship. It was a you know, couple different opportunities. Well, you know, one was with Intel um, doing you know, some marketing work, again, in healthcare, or work for a startup um, that was a healthcare search engine. And, and you know, Intel, you know, we worked for 10 weeks, and I'd have Intel on my resume forever. Oh, it was just really tough. And in, in the end, I took the startup job, and what I, you know, while I don't have Intel on my resume now, you know, what I ended up getting was I got thrown into all sorts of situations that I wouldn't have otherwise, like, here's, here are some contracts, you know, rewrite these for this client, you know, with these terms in mind. And I was like, what the heck, are you kidding me? Like, I don't, don't I need to be a lawyer to do that? You guys are resting a contract on my shoulders, I'm here for a week or whatever it might be. Um, but I realized that, I mean, that's how business is done, especially in a startup. So um, that was really good for me, especially now at TubeMogul, um, where I've been doing business development and sales and, and having to, to come up with contracts all the time. Um, and then getting into the second year, I mean, uh, doing the, the entrepreneurship stuff here at, at Berkeley and, and at Haas, um, you know, the classes are small, class sizes are small together, but then in the entrepreneurship community, you really feel like you get to know people who are interested, and there might be 40 or 50 people that really want to start companies, maybe it's less than that. And so by the second year, you're writing, uh, you know, I had written a couple business plans, was in a class, but I was writing two different business plans, and it just so happened another uh, group in that class was on to writing a business plan that I ended up matching up with for, for TubeMogul. And it was one of those things, I'm at Les Le Cheval in December of 2006, talking with them just about the idea uh, that they were working on and, and you know, spitballing some ideas and thought, this is a good idea, this seems to be you know, future thinking for, for web video. So um, right there, I, I decided, you know, let's see if I can help out, and so I, I joined that team then. Um, so that was, something then that we secured some uh, space in the incubator for as well. And this was the second semester of my MBA. And um, you know, we, we had a rough alpha product. What TubeMogul is, is we're, I mean, today we'd say we're a web video promotion platform to get your videos viewed by your audience. Um, at the time, we were focused on the analytics. I mean, we have this great analytics tool for web video. We were web video distribution and analytics. And so for those that were putting videos across the web in a lot of different video sites, we could get the videos there quickly and then have a dashboard to, to measure your views across all those sites. Um, 
we, we just put up an alpha product and uh, it was something that there, we were getting a lot of traction. There were a lot of people using us that were doing with video and from record labels to individuals to new media production companies and, and big agencies. And so we thought there was something there. We were you know, really working hard on that and it's second semester business plan competition. We did something that was a little bit unusual. You know, we had been through the process of writing business plans quite a bit. We actually outsourced the business plan uh, writing to some first years that were in uh, Jerry Engel's entrepreneurship class. And so, I mean, with our input, of course, but we didn't spend a lot of time figuring things out there because we were really working on getting, getting users, finding out what their needs were. The, the first years actually went through the first round um, and we were like, wow, this is great. Um, and then as it came to the finals, um, you know, we had been, we had then now established some non-revenue, but some deals with some, some big companies. And we had, I don't know, 500 or more or free users. And that actually paid off big from, from the business plan competition standpoint in that we had traction. And we ended up winning the business plan competition, which was a complete shock to me because, uh, I mean, we were against high technology companies, you know. Uh, uh, advancements in MRI machines that you know are multi-billion dollar industries had multiple patents here we didn't have much of a technological barrier but what we did have was adoption and we were able to convince uh, the panel of judges that we were in it to for a, for a company it wasn't just an idea so we had jumped in feet first of course it's a lot easier when you're in school so that's another thing I mean do get your get things started while you're in school but we decided we were going to do this after school, and you know we had uh, we 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 um, you know chose not to take some some jobs that were were, were high paying, and we're just going to say you know what we haven't been making money for the last two years really, so uh, let's just extend it a little bit. It's easy to do that rather than to have a steady paycheck and then cut yourself off. So so we we dedicate ourselves to doing that and seeing how things worked. We ended up doing that for the rest of the year. Uh, we didn't think it would be that long, but um, you know, we went unpaid and luckily had um, support from spouses, et cetera. So we, we graduated and the business plan competition really helped us with uh, fundraising because the, the VC community just took a look at who won the competition. They were inviting us to pitch. And you know, something that was really good is that we our pitch was, we don't know what the business model is yet. We know we're solving a problem. Here's what we're gonna to continue to do to solve the problems that our users are telling us they need. And we think these are the models. And so with that, it, you know, the whole VC game, and I'm getting into the lesson slide already, but the, it's kind of like dating. You know, you gotta make them want you. Um, if you go in and you're, and you're saying, uh, yeah, I'm not really interested in your money right now. Let me tell you what I'm doing though. They're like, tell me more. Um, so, um, but what it, it also served uh, was an, a, a place where they would introduce us to their network to help vet our ideas and maybe be seed investors. They also were using it as a benchmark. So, okay, you say you're gonna do all these things. You've done this today, that's impressive. You say you're gonna do these things. You know, let's talk about it when, when, you, when you have done those things. And, and that helped us a lot um, and it helped us with our culture. Um, before I dive into some more of the lessons, I think it's, the, you know, the other thing to note is OptoLL Solutions, which is a parallel computing software company, and that's in the incubator right now, and that was through meeting up with some PhD students. Um, again, it was something through coursework, but also just um, mixing and, and socializing in, in these types of environments, and, and that's something totally different business. You know, enterprise software, um, and it's something we think we can bootstrap. It's something where we have revenue from some grants. We are about to sign a deal with a uh, big enterprise software company. And, um, and you know, we'll see how it goes. But again, it, it gets into, you know, it ties in to some of the lessons that, that I, I'll bring up and right now. And I want to show you my ugly slide. So I thought this was great when I did it. See, and then I drew all the lines. 
and then I realized how messy it was. But those are the, the things I want to talk about, so I'll take away the lines. So first, I was talking about fundraising a, a little bit and uh, what we saw coming out of business school, winning the business plan and competition was really helpful, obviously. But the other thing I want to note is that, uh, and we did benchmark ourselves to then ultimately raise uh, a Series A uh, at the end of the year. Um, and it was helpful to say, this is what we said we were going to do you know, eight months ago. We touched base. Here we are now. That was huge. Um, but the angel investing and seed investing part was really big, too, because if you get seed investors, it's easier money, but it's, it's rolling, too. You can just keep, keep um, enhancing your pitch and going after the right people. And, and you, know, you go after the right people, meaning get people that you want on your board uh, or as advisors and, and get them to put some money in rather than just, you know, just give them some equity. Once they have money in, then they're, and if they're respected in that industry, they're gonna bring along their friends. I mean, they're gonna tell their friends, oh yeah, I'm in this investment. And they're like, really? I, well, if, uh, if Dave is part of this investment, I wanna be part of it. This is, uh, let me hear more about it. And so that helps out a lot and it helps give credibility. Um, and if you get the people that have gone through the venture capital process, then they're making introduction to their friends that are VCs. They're helping out when you do get term sheets to negotiate the best terms. Um, and, and so that's really critical. Um, so talked about fundraising, VCs. You know, a big part of um, startups is scrappiness. Um, by scrappiness, I mean, you know, we went unpaid for almost a year. We, we did everything to, to not spend money. I mean, we were in the incubator. That was great. We, um, I mean, and actually it was huge. It, we needed that to, I mean, that's one of the bis, biggest expenses early on is where are you going to house people, um, especially if you're already working for free. So that, that is a big expense that we were able to avoid. Um, we, we're doing our own PR and marketing. We did from a zero budget, which really helped us learn how to speak to the customers and find out what they need. It was a great iterative process. Um, when we went to conferences, we would only go pretty much if it was for free, like we'd get on panels. We would steal pens from hotels and use it as our, uh, you know, put that as in our supply cabinet. And I mean, do anything. And, and, and that's really important, and it's still part of our, our culture today, even after you know, we, we, we've taken in $5 million in investment um, and have 20 people. And that's what differentiates us from a company that's burning maybe three quarters of a million dollars a month to one that's burning you know, a quarter of a million dollars a month. I mean, it, it's that big of a difference when you instill that in your DNA. So you gotta be scrappy, you gotta wear a lot of hats and be willing to do a lot of things. And then I wanna bring that over then to having an MBA. I mean, those two things, if, you've, if you're an MBA student and you're getting your MBA, you have to prove yourself that like, hey, though I have an MBA, I'm willing to do these things. Because I mean, the opportunity cost is pretty big. You can go out there and make great money. I mean, same with any engineers. Uh, you guys know what it's about. Um, you, you have a lot of opportunities. So especially with an MBA though, because typically you've had some experience, then you went to school where you're like pretending to be a CEO, doing these great case studies, and a lot of people already have a stigma you know, attached to it. Like even if you work for a big company, oh, this person just wants to do strategy, they don't want to do the work. I mean, that, there is that reality that you have to overcome. Well, it's even bigger in a, in a startup because I mean, you know, you hear about taking out the trash and that stuff, but it's true, you gotta do everything and, and for little, you know, reward up front. Um, so the scrappiness factor, I mean, you really have to evaluate if you're willing to do that. Um, and, and that also, the having an MBA also ties into like strategy. Um, like I mentioned, you know, you're used to these cases and let's put together a great strategy. In a startup, I mean, I think that you, you need to have like an overall strategy to, to understand what the marketplace is, but man, I would say err on the side of less strategy. Um, you need to do, and do again and again and again. You need to be talking to customers. Um, you know, part of the process that I learned through business school and doing the, the um, 
uh, business plans was that like the first time it was a lot of strategy and we're doing all this stuff. In the end, we had this business plan, but we hadn't really done enough to talk to people and find out what the market really needs. Um, so in a startup world, you, you need to almost go against strategy, just do it. Uh, even if it's like a deal that you might be competitive, you know, the whole word co-opetition, you know, there's books about that. I haven't read them, but I, I think I know what they are. Um, and, and it goes into that, you know, there might be someone that this, this, you look at them and they're like, this is probably a competitor, but they're a startup. Let's work with them now. And if we, you know, we do a deal now and if we have to change things later, then we'll change things later. But it strengthens you in the short term. Just do it and get, get the momentum. Um, so that's my, that's my uh, advice on startups and strategy. Um, going back then to scrappiness and solving problems, you know, part of scrappiness is, is getting out there and just finding a problem, solving it, doing whatever you can to, to please the customers. And, and that's what we're doing. If you guys hear of Steve Blank's class on customer development, it is an awesome class and his book is awesome as well. And it really talks about as in a startup and in technology, you need to just go out there, talk to the customers, have them help you build the product rather than have this vision of what the technology is and should do. You go through a process of building it and then you're, oh, you were just you know, a few degrees off and you ended up with something here and now you gotta go build something that's over here. If you, if you really work on the customer development process, um, you're building it as you go along and you're making tighter relationships with the people that are gonna use your product and, and they love you for it. So that was a lot of what I was doing that first year uh, with TubeMogul was talking to people that had signed up for our free product, getting them on the phone they were like, wow, this is just a, a website and here there's people behind it. I, it's a free tool and here they're asking me what I need. Um, and then we iterated from that and we would say, okay, we gotta build these things. And um, you know, from that, we, I ended up in sales because I had never done sales before. Uh, didn't think I could be a salesperson necessarily, but always wanted to maybe learn it because if you wanna be a CEO, you, you really need to be someone who can sell. But I ended up selling because I was talking to the, all our customers, knew what they wanted, and then ended up selling them things before it was actually built. So I was actually in a better position to sell something than getting in a sales guy who wants to say, okay, here's my, what's the pitch, here's my widget, I'm gonna go out and attack all these, this is my, my potential customer base, now sell. Um, I was someone who could just you know, look at uh, you know, a, a group of, of video creators and, and maybe not know what the segmentation was because we really didn't know yet. There was early stage, later stage, and, and, and sell to them. Um, that gets back, I think, to VCs and good CEOs in that um, you know, VCs will take a long time to invest in someone, especially uh, a company that's new. You know, they vet the idea, the time's on their side. But then they'll, if, if they invested in somebody that had a home run for them or made them lots of money, they are willing to sign that check, sometimes blank checks. And why is that? It's not because they know that those people have great ideas uh, and, and, and are visionaries. I mean, that's part of it. But the bigger part, I think, is that they have gone through the process with them iterating on a business model. They know they can take an idea, build a company, and steer the ship you know, week in and week out to, to address the market. Um, so, so iteration and customer development is, is a, a key lesson that I've learned from, from starting companies. Um, and another part of customer development and being scrappy is around PR. Um, if you have a startup company, and this is something Steve Blank says, you know, he, he basically says um, PR agencies for, for technology startups are, are a racket, and, and I believe that. Um, are there any PR people here? Okay. Uh, um, it's, it, you know, it's not across the board, but basically, if you have a business that you don't know what necessarily what the model is, and it's nascent, and it's gonna evolve, why do you spend a lot of money on messaging and getting out there with your name as one thing when six months later you might be another thing? Um, you need to keep close to your customers and, and home, figure out what your, your PR strategy is 
along the way. And that actually enables customer evangelism anyhow, because you're talking with them, you get them, you do things for them, and they love you for it, and they tell other, other customers about you. So that's another uh, lesson I have is really around PR. And a um, couple other pieces um, before I open it up to questions. And one is, you know, from a business choice standpoint, you know, when you're solving problems, if you're in a new market, something that's hot, um, you know, one strategy is to, to find out what the picks and shovels are. What are the things that that area is gonna need? So in the area of web video, there were, when we were starting, um, YouTube had just been bought by Google. There were hundreds of video sites. We didn't know what would be the winning thing for a video site, so we weren't going out and building a destination that uh, would, we would then try to have some differentiable element that would make us better than YouTube. We were, we were enabling all of the content creators that were posting videos on all these sites, and they needed a way to measure it. So you know, that applies to a lot of different domains, and I, I just think it's one, one way to, to pick a, a hot area is to figure out what are those components that, that people are gonna need. So, um, you know, the things I've talked about with, with MBAs, and I know you're not all MBAs, but just, I guess, your education and entrepreneurship um, would be that you need to prioritize, um, you know, what, you know, make those choices on how far you're, you're gonna go in, on one class versus something that's extracurricular. Um, you know, be ready to make sacrifices, uh, whether it's money, whether it's, you know, social life. Um, you know, I look at, it was, it was a tough point right around October of 2007 when still some of my classmates were like just starting their jobs. So like they, they got jobs, let's say, in the spring or even sometimes in the fall before, had big signing bonuses, took the summers to travel they were in Thailand or or China or you know, wherever, you know, all over the place. And they were coming back and they were bitching about, man, now I gotta go back to work, I gotta work, it's been so long. And here, we've been working our asses off for, and there was really no break, it was kinda like we stuck our head up, and, oh, graduation, and then you know, just kept working. So that was a big sacrifice and was, was a little bit of a low point for, for just a, a short period of time. But then realize, you know, then they get into their jobs and realize you know, that they, they're not their own bosses and, uh, and they, you know, work is work. The worst day at school is still a pretty good day at work usually. So, um, you know, learning that and their unhappiness versus, uh, versus what it's like to start your own company, you know, makes it all, all worthwhile. So, so those are how I put together my lessons. I summarized it a little bit about fundraising, be scrappy, solve problems, iterate, um, and, and on PR. So that's it. I think I might have been a like 25 minutes, but um, what questions do you guys have?